And this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. It's a while since I've reported on the Arctic. Uh, I shouldn't really have anything to report because we're heading into winter, aren't we? Um, but this is the headline uh, that came from Gizmodo a few days ago. Some Arctic sea ice is acting like it's midsummer. So winter has extended its grip on the Arctic, dropping a certain a curtain of darkness on top of the world. But at least one part of the Arctic is resisting its grasp grasp in what's becoming an unfortunately common story. Sea ice story growth is stalling out in one of the gateway seas leading to the heart of the Arctic Ocean. The Chukchi Sea currently has a sea ice extent more reminiscent of summer than early winter, a sign that something is not right in the winters at the highest latitudes of the globe. Well, thank God someone's saying it, eh? The Chukchi Sea sits between Alaska and Russia. That makes it a crucial bridge to the Bering Sea, a place for sea to latch onto and spread its icy tendrils to the south. But this winter so far has seen ice suffer. After bottoming out in September, the ice in the Chukchi Sea has failed to rebound. Usually, the dip in temperatures, coupled with the lack of sunlight, causes the ice to build up to back up quickly. This year, though, growth has been much slower. Sea ice data crunched by the California University of California Irvine PhD in Arctic uh, watcher Zach Lave shows that the ice extent is the lowest on record for this time of year by a long shot. So this is the uh, what uh, Zach Lave came up against came up with. Arctic sea ice as a whole sits at its third lowest extent on record for this time of year and is well below both the long-term average. Part of the reason for the sluggish growth ties to this spring and summer of sweltering discontent. Temperatures were abnormally high much too often. It reached nearly 95 degrees Fahrenheit in the Swedish Arctic. Lightning, which generally requires warm, humid conditions, struck near the North Pole, and the northernmost settlement on Earth hit 70 degrees Fahrenheit for its first time ever. That's just a smattering of all the ways the Arctic was fucked this summer. Don't even get me started on the fires, but they all point to the culprit, likely driving weak sea ice growth, heat, and lots of it. The intense heat this summer has helped melt ice. This year's Arctic sea ice minimum was the second lowest on record. That in turn meant more dark open water was available to absorb the sun's rays and to heat up itself. So even now that the sun has gone down for much of the Arctic, the last rays of summer are still much, very much present in the form of toasty, by Arctic standards, waters and making it hard for sea ice to form. The f this feedback loop is one of the hallmarks of climate change. Well, it wasn't a few years ago in the media. Uh, might have been in Gizmodo. Uh, carbon pollution has warmed the Arctic twice as fast as the rest of the world and the system has rapidly destabilised in recent years. The more plentiful fires and melting permafrost are releasing more carbon that will spread further speed up the ch changes. Meanwhile, disappearing sea ice and thus more open water will ensure the region continues to heat faster than the rest of the world. The vicious cycle has put the Arctic on the brink of a tipping point into a more volatile state unrecognisable from the Arctic we know today. If you want to know what the transition could be like, the Chukchi Sea is offering quite the lesson right now. So none of these people want to admit that we're into, we're right in the midst of it now. Uh, now this came from uh, Sam Karana of Arctic News. I won't read the whole thing, 
Um, so he's talking about the Arctic Ocean. And he's saying there was little ice between Greenland and Svalbard. For reference, the image below has been added, showing coastlines for the same area. Um, and then he goes into the uh, the temperatures, and the he he's one of the few people that goes into this very important point here that the freezing point for salt water is lower at around minus two degrees Celsius or 28.4 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, a rise in the salt content of the water alone can make ice melt, i.e. even when the temperature of the water doesn't rise. Okay, he's showing the, uh, the low um, Arctic sea ice uh, volume. Uh, here it is right now. And again, the Chukchi Sea. So, yeah, so I'll leave a description uh, for my article, which has got both of these in the description box uh, below.